In this video, I'm going to be going through the required practical three for AQA A-level biology, which is the osmosis practical, and I'm going to be using potato as my plant tissue. We're going to be going through the equipment, the method, common mistakes students make, common exam questions, the actual experiment itself, and how to interpret the results. And if you want all of that bundled together in a free guide, I've got it linked in the description, so you can click just there to get your hands on it. I've got a video like this for all of the required practicals, so click subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as each one comes out. And a massive thank you to Woodford County High School for having me in today to film all of these practicals. So the aim of this required practical for students is they need to work out what is the water potential inside of a piece of plant tissue and also learn how to do a dilution series. And they're going to be working out the water potential inside of the plant tissue, or in this case, the potato, by putting the potato in different concentrations of sucrose so we can then work out at which concentration of sucrose do we get zero change in mass. That indicates the concentration of sucrose in the potato chip. And then we can look up what water potential that would be. So the equipment that I've got then, I have got pre-cut for me six potato cylinders. I've got six boiling tubes. I've got a range of smaller beakers and also my distilled water and one mole of sucrose solution to start with. Those I'm going to be using to create the dilution series, as well as these different size syringes. I've got a 10 milliliter and a five milliliter syringe. I'll be using those in my serial dilution. I've got a large 500 milliliter beaker here and a thermometer, which will act as my water bath. I've got my boiling tube rack for my boiling tubes, stop clock, tissue for blotting, kettle with the hot water, for the water bath. I've got the bung to put on for the mixing in between the cereal dilutions, forceps to get the potato in and out of the boiling tubes, white tile and scalpel for the cutting. And then I've also got a ruler so that I can measure the initial length and final length, as well as I've got my balance here to measure the initial and final mass of each potato as well. And lastly, I've got my permanent marker to label all of the boiling tubes so that I don't confuse which potato has gone into which boiling tube. So the different variables in this experiment. The independent variable, so we are deliberately going to be changing the sucrose concentration. And we'll need to do that first. We'll need to create our dilution series to get those different concentrations. The dependent variable is going to be our percentage change in mass. So we will need to measure the initial mass the final mass, and then work that out as a percentage change in mass. And then our control variables. We will need to make sure that all of the potato chips are placed in a water bath at the same temperature because temperature affects the rate of osmosis. We also need to have the same size and shape potato because the surface area to volume ratio will also affect the rate of osmosis. And then also things like the length of time that we leave each potato chip. Also the species and the age can have an impact as well. So let's think about the risk then. So we can come up with a risk assessment to make the students aware of if they're not having to research it themselves. So first of all, we can see over here that for those potato chips, these ones have actually been prepared already, but you could use a cork borer, which is quite sharp, and you need to make sure you don't have any skin on either side. And for that, we could use a scalpel on our white tile to cut it. So the risk here would be the blade, the scalpel could cut us. So students need to have a sharp blade cut onto a hard surface and cut away from themselves to minimize the likelihood of cutting themselves. Next, we have a lot of glassware in this experiment, particularly the boiling tubes, because they could roll off and smash. We need to make sure that students are handling them with care. And when they're not using them, they're going into a boiling tube holder, so they're less likely to roll and smash. I'm also gonna be using some hot water from the kettle to create my water bath. So students should be handling the hot water with care to reduce the likelihood of scalding themselves. So my first step then is to create my dilution series. So we can see here on the table, these are the different concentrations of sucrose solution that I'm going to be making. Zero, 0 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0 0.8, and one moles per decimeter cubed. And we've got the different volumes there in the table that I'll need to add of my distilled water and of my sucrose solution. So I'm actually gonna label my boiling tubes now. So this will be my zero, so that'll be just distilled water. 0.2, 0.2, 0.4, 4, 0.6, 0.8, and one. So the one mole, that is exactly what I've got here. The zero is the distilled water. So I'm just gonna put those in straight away, making sure that the bottom of the plunger is exactly on the line of the 10. 
So I want 20 millilitres or centimetres cubed. So I'm going to do that twice. And then this one is just distilled water. Okay, so that's those two made. The rest now, we are going to need to create these different concentrations. Now, all of these needs have the same volume in and we're having 20 centimetres cubed. So the students could either do a dilution series or like the table that I showed, they could work out using the serial dilution calculation to work out what volume of the one molar sucrose solution do they need to add and what volume of the distilled water do they need to add. Now, the next one that I've got is 0.8. So I need to have 16 of sucrose and four of water. So 16. 10, 16, and then four of water to add up to 20, so the same total volume. Then we have got 0 0.6, so for this one I need 12 of sucrose and eight of water. Now we have our 0 0.4, which is the reverse of this one. So we now need 12 of water and eight of sucrose. And then our final one, 0 0.2, we're going to need 16 of water and four of the sucrose. For the 0 0.2, we need four of the sucrose solution and 16 of the distilled water. Four. Well, this one. So I've got all of those, but for each one, I'm just going to place the bung in and just invert to make sure we do have that thoroughly mixed. So we have the concentration we're expecting. And I'm just dabbing it each time to reduce transferring over any. So we've now created our different sucrose concentration solutions. So we said we're going to be controlling the temperature and I'm going to put them all at about 30 degrees C because that's going to be warm enough that we should get a set of results within the space of an hour's lesson. So I am going to pour it into here. This is boiling water from the kettle. This is probably already cooled down to about 60 or 70 degrees C. Let's see what it's at so we know how much cold water to add. Make students aware though, don't fill it to the top because by the time you've added all of these boiling tubes, the volume of the water is going to rise and it could overflow. Now that is 70. So I then add some cold water from the tap just to bring that down to 30. Now, one of the key things to make students aware here is they'll set up the water bath now at this point and often students then forget about it and they don't consider the fact that the temperature is going to continually drop throughout the experiment. So they should be regularly checking the temperature on their thermometer and if it's gone lower than 30, they add more hot water, it is up to 30. And that's quite a common exam question now, how you can check that your temperature of the water bath is remaining constant. Right, that's still 60, so I'm going to add some more. Now at this stage, mine's getting a bit too full, so I'm gonna pour some out. There's one beaker seems to drop it by about 10 degrees. And I'm still at 50. Now, depending on what temperature the hot water comes out of your taps, you probably wouldn't actually need a kettle for this because that was obviously a lot hotter than 30 degrees C. The water coming out of the taps may well be about 40 to 45 degrees C, so you might not need the kettle. So that's something that you could test in advance. So I've now got mine down to temperature. And what I'm gonna do next then is place my boiling tubes into the water bath. And yeah, even mine there is too full. So I'm gonna leave those to all come to the same temperature, which will probably take about five minutes and they need to check that with their thermometer. Now, while that is reaching temperature, this is now when we can get our potato chips ready. So I would suggest they set that up first and then at the same time, we can be doing this. So I've got my balance a little tray that I'm going to be placing the potatoes in each time. Mine are actually prepared already. So as I was saying, there was a cork borer that was used to take these slices out of the same potato. So we've got that as a control variable. And then they were cut to the same length. But I'm going to double check that. So yeah, we can see a pretty good job there. They have been cut to basically the same length. But what we can then do is 
on a piece of tissue paper, or it could just be a piece of paper, to make sure we don't mix up which is going into which, I would now actually write on my tissue paper that this is the potato I'm gonna put in at zero. 0 0.2, 0 0.4 concentration, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one. I've also got some tissue paper here ready to blot them dry. And again, not squeeze, because if you squeeze, it's going to draw water out from within the cells. We just want to remove any of the water on the outside because that's not actually the mass of the potato. That's just water on the outside. So now I'm just going to press the zero button so it knows that that is zero mass with that tray on. Place my potato chip that I've blotted in and I've got 6.02. You could, if you wanted to as well, get students to measure the initial length and final lengths. We could do a percentage change in length and a percentage change in mass. I'm just going to do percentage change in mass for now. And that is the one that I'm going to place in the zero concentration. So this is how I'm going to be keeping track of it. And then you need to do that for all of your potato chips. And if you do ever get where it's deviating from zero when it's empty, just press the zero button again. In fact, I'm not gonna use this one because I can see that there's a bit of a hollow part there. So that means we don't actually have the same surface area as the others. So I'm gonna go for this one instead. That's 611. So we've measured all of those start masses. Once it's then gone into the water, we'll leave it for, it depends how long your lesson is, ideally you want at least 30 minutes. But if you only have 20, you could always increase the temperature slightly because then you should have osmosis happening at a faster rate. But I'm gonna leave it for at least 30 minutes and then we'll come back and see the change in mass. And we're gonna do it as a percentage change in mass because we can see here, these are our starting masses. And even though we've used the same potato, same cork, or cut them to the same lengths, none of them are the same starting mass. So that's why we'll do it as a percentage change in mass to take into account they none of them started off the same. So now after we be really careful, I definitely put them into the correct tubes. So this one is zero, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0.8 and one. And now I'm gonna leave them for about half an hour. Right, so for us, it's been, I think, about 20, 25 minutes. So we're now going to take those out and measure the final mass. Now, I did have four sets, so as you can see, didn't actually fit in. So sometimes it is easy to just have a sieve, pour it into the sink and do it that way. Now we have it, we've got our final results as well on a tissue, but that would then need to be recorded into a proper table and plot your percentage change in mass against the sucrose concentration. So while we're waiting for osmosis to happen to be able to actually see any impact on the masses, let's think about what the results would be. So students are going to measure the initial mass and the final mass, and then they work out the percentage change. And this is how students would calculate the percentage change. The equation, percentage change in mass, brackets, final mass minus initial mass, brackets, divided by initial mass. Then we're gonna plot that onto a graph to make a calibration curve. So on the x-axis, students will need to plot their sucrose concentration and on their y-axis, they would have their percentage change in mass. And if they have multiple repeats or you're pulling the class data and calculate a mean, then that would be the mean percentage change in mass. Students can then plot their curved line of best fit to create that calibration curve. And it's at the point that the line crosses the zero percentage change in mass that indicates the concentration inside of our our potato chips and then we could look up for that sucrose concentration what is the water potential and in that way we have used a dilution series of sucrose concentrations doing the osmosis required practical to identify the water potential of plant tissue in this case our potato plant. So in summary some of the common mistakes to look out for are the labeling of the potatoes to make sure they're going into the correct boiling tube. So doing something like this where you are literally labeling on a piece of paper which piece of potato is going into 
to which boiling tube and what was their start mass. And make sure you take it out and place it in the same place and all of these are labeled, that should really help. Making sure students are definitely blotting their potato before it is always going to be weighed, but blotting in a gentle, consistent way and not squeezing it because that draws water out from the cells themselves and therefore affecting the mass. And also when it comes to creating your different concentrations of sucrose solutions, really check that students are using their syringe accurately. So they're definitely creating the concentration that they think. So that is it for the osmosis required practical. Don't forget you can click the link in the description to download this entire practical guide for free. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future practicals. Mm -hmm.